Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. <laughs> I am sick and tired of people who say that if you debate and you disagree with this administration, somehow you're not patriotic, and we should stand up and say, we are Americans and we have a right to debate and disagree with any I don't feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. (laughs) With all due respect, the fact is we had four dead Americans. Was it because of a protest or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? It is our job to figure out what happened and do everything we can to prevent it from ever happening again, Senator. <laughs> Today, Putin basically said in a long press conference that, oh, you know, we, all I want to do is protect the rights of the minorities, namely Russian speakers, and he's been on a campaign to give everybody who has any Russian connection, a lot of retired Russian military in uh, Crimea, he's given them all Russian passports. Now, if this sounds familiar, it's what Hitler did back in the 30s. We came, we saw, (laughs) he died. (laughs) We've gone from overt psychosis to treason, sedition. The story today that broke in the New York Times is the greatest act against America that I've seen in my entire life. I've never seen anything like it. It's the kind of act that in a sane nation that was not drugged would bring about a revolution. A revolution that would unite the people. A revolution saying enough is enough. This corruption of the Clintons has gotten to a point where they must be immediately indicted and tried for the crimes against this nation. What am I talking about? It's the greatest scandal of your life. There is no greater scandal I have ever seen in my life. And it is about the uranium in the ground in the United States of America that was sold off to the Russians. And where did this article appear? It appeared in the right-wing New York Times. The right-wing New York Times reported, as a result of this incredible book about the money that's being... uh, Uh, doled out to all of these corrupt individuals is the Russian president and American president and the woman who would like to be the next one. And at the heart of this tale, according to the New York Times, are several men, leaders of the Canadian mining industry, who are big donors to the endeavors of Bill Clinton and his family. They built, financed, and sold off to the Russians a company that would become known as Uranium One. There are names to these men. One of them is Frank Juistra, G-I-U-S-T-R-A. And he is seen in a picture with former President Bill Clinton at a Clinton Foundation news conference in 07. Beyond, beyond the uranium mines in Kazakhstan that are among the most lucrative uranium mines in the world, this sale arranged by these men through Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton, according to this article, at least allegedly, gave the Russians control of one-fifth of all the uranium production capacity in the United States. Do you have any idea what the strategic implications are for national security? Well, they are so grave that such a sale would have to have been approved by a committee composed of representatives from a number of U.S. governmental agencies. And among the agencies that would have had to approve this sale was none other than the State Department, then headed by Hillary Clinton. And as the Russians gradually assumed control of Uranium One in three separate transactions from 09 to 13, Canadian records show us that a flow of cash made its way to the Clinton Foundation. Uranium One's chairman used his family foundation to make four donations totaling 2.35 mil. That's peanuts. That's what the surface shows. And by the way, all of you good liberals, those contributions to the foundation run by, I think, the daughter, were not publicly disclosed by the Clintons, despite an agreement 
that Mrs. Clinton signed with the Obama White House to publicly identify all donors. Shortly after the Russians announced their intention to acquire a majority stake in Uranium One, guess what happened? Bill Clinton received $500,000 for a speech in Moscow from a Russian investment bank with links to the Kremlin that was promoting in, promoting Uranium One stock. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? I'll go, I'll go on. This New York Times examination of the Uranium One deal is based on dozens of interviews, as well as a review of public records and securities filings in Canada. But some of the connections between Uranium One and the Clinton Foundation were unearthed by Peter Schweitzer. Schweitzer is the most amazing author of our time. He's the author of the forthcoming book, Clinton Cash. And the fact of the matter is, this book should bring down the Democrat government. Now, I know the Republicans are corrupt. Don't get me wrong. Don't think I'm going to sit here and tell you I'm going to support Republicans right now. I know that there's corruption in that party that would make your head spin. However, there are different levels of everything. And this level of corruption approaches sedition, outright sedition. Now, the New York Times says this, whether donations played any role in the approval of the uranium deal is unknown. How can anyone listening to this show not understand what has gone on? How can anyone listening to this show tell me that you still believe Hillary Clinton is not only worthy of the office of the presidency with such a scummy, filthy relationship that the country itself can't stand anymore, but that the New York Times and other bastions of liberalism are calling it the disastrous Clinton post-presidency. The New York Times, as I just said, reported about the State Department's decision to approve the sale of uranium mines to a Russian company which donated $2.35 million to the Clinton Global Initiative. And then a Russian investment bank promoted the deal, paid Bill $500,000 for a stinking speech in Moscow. The right-wing Washington Post reports that Bill Clinton received $26 million in speaking fees from entities that also donated to the Clinton Global Initiative. The Washington Examiner reports 22 of the 37 corporations nominated for a prestigious State Department award and six of the eight ultimate winners, while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, were also donors to the Clinton Family Foundation. In other words, they bought their awards. And Reuters, another bastion of the right, says that Hillary Clinton's family charities are refiling at least five annual tax returns after a Reuters review found errors in how they reported donations from governments and said they may audit other Clinton Foundation returns in case of other errors. I want to ask you something. If you filed a false tax return and you got caught, would your government, would your IRS, would Obama's IRS permit you to refile your tax return? They put you in jail. They wouldn't let you refile. They would have caught you. What do you mean? When you get caught, you refile? What, if you're Hillary Clinton, you do what you want? Yes. So the article goes on and says the Clinton campaign is batting down the darkest and most conspiratorial interpretation of these stories and where all this leads remains to be seen. But the most positive interpretation is not exactly good. Do you get the picture or don't you? This is the most corrupt family in the history of the United States of America, according to every source that I can put together, and that includes all the liberal sources. Now, it's one thing to talk about overt corruption. It's another thing to talk about the destruction of our national security interests by selling off the uranium in our own soil. Did you hear what I just said to you? Uranium from our own nation was sold off to the Russians. Now, the secondary question here is, why is this story coming out now? Who is trying to take down Hillary, and who will benefit from this? That is the number one question on the minds of those who can think two steps ahead of the news. And I'm pretty sure I know why this is suddenly coming out. The corruption of Hill and Hillary Clinton is nothing new. Those of us in the uh, business of investigating and talking about investigations have seen this dirt for years. But now that she's running and she's not sufficiently communistic enough, they're trying to destroy her in order to bring up the fake Indian, Focahontas Elizabeth Warren, which as far as I'm concerned is a very good thing. Because Elizabeth Warren is so unpalatable as a candidate 
that even the most tepid Republican can beat her. That's the opening to the Savage Nation. The phone number here, and I open it up to you, the audience, with a number of questions is 855-400-SAVAGE. Let me repeat, when I saw this uranium story and the money that was given to the Clinton Foundation and that Hillary was sitting as Secretary of State while this happened, internally I said this is the kind of story that brought down governments in the past and would bring down governments uh, today if we had a legitimate populace and a legitimate government. This is the kind of scandal that led to the Russian Revolution. This is the kind of scandal that had people rioting in the streets because the actions of the Clintons cannot be accepted by any nation that wishes to survive. I'm going to take a quick break and come back to take your calls right here at 855 400 Stay tuned. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. His company was like a bit player, uh, and and really had gone from a sh worthless shell company overnight, got this huge uranium mining deal. And then soon after that, Bill Clinton got a huge donation, $31 million, uh, to his charitable foundation, followed by an, uh, a pledge to uh, donate $100 million more. So the question is, is this really about the corruption that is emanating from the sewer called the Clinton Foundation, or is it really a desire to replace Hillary Clinton, the most corrupt of all candidates in modern American history, as far as I can tell, uh, with someone not as corrupt, but more to the left of her than the New York Times, the Washington Post, uh, you know what I'm saying? In other words, they want a so-called progressive, which is a code word for socialist, communist, uh, whatever you wish. As you know, American political campaigns are barred from accepting foreign donations. But foreigners may give to foundations in the United States. So Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Clinton Foundation, Uranium One, selling off the land rights in the United States of America to Russia in the form of a national security issue. National security issue or I should say a strategic medal with national security implications of very grave nature, sold off to Russia right out of our own earth. You couldn't write a novel with a story as pronouncedly shocking as this. I just published, uh, my book will be out in three weeks. I saw yesterday a jump from number 10,000 to, I don't know, 500, countdown to Mecca. If anyone wants to write a novel, all you have to do is pick up the uranium scandal of Hillary, Bill, and the uh, Clinton Foundation, the Russians, the uh, Canadians. You couldn't invent a story like this. Now, I don't know whether this is all coming because of the book or because of people within the Democrat Party who want her out of the picture because they want to replace her with someone further to the left. And here's a few names for you. Uh, where's Joe Biden? Just throwing it out there. He's awfully silent. Have you noticed you haven't heard from him? Where is old Joe? Who is behind all of this? And by the way, while we're talking about national security and uranium ore in the United States of America, where's Dianne Feinstein in all this? The reason I mentioned Dianne Feinstein is because her husband is a genius businessman who has his fingers and pies around the world. He made... Uh, uh, armor, armored vests, I understand, in Iraq that failed. He's uh, done war uh, contracts. Wonderful man, all around wonderful man, uh, Richard Blum. And I'm not sure he had anything to do with the uranium story. In fact, as of now, I see he has nothing to do with it that I can tell. But we did find this. I haven't seen it on Fox either. What was the number? 500000 to a million? Uh, Richard Blum gave 500000 to a million dollars to the Clinton Library, Clinton Foundation. Now, you don't think he gave that money because he wanted to get a stick of bubble gum for it, do you? Would you think Diane Feinstein, sitting as the chairwoman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, would have known about this uranium scandal 
And don't you think that as chairwoman of the uh, Senate Intelligence Committee, she should have objected to the sale of our uranium ore to a Russian company? Especially when that hag was screaming about Russia being Hitler. That queen of hearts, Dianne Feinstein, kept telling us Putin was Hitler. Meanwhile, right under her nose, uranium was being taken and sold off to the Russians. She must have known about it. Now, if she didn't know about it, then she's incompetent and should be fired. But then again, you see, I'm getting outraged over something that the government should be outraged over. If we had a legitimate government, the Republicans would have put down their whiskey bottles and their Prozac today, and they would have said, that's it, that's the end of the story, that's the end of the road, we're not taking this anymore, we're holding immediate hearings, and if, if any of this reaches any level of, of, of a crime, we're indicting Hillary and Bill Clinton. We're not going to stand for this. We're going to force them to testify about the money trail, the uranium, the transfers, etc. And we'll bring the daughter in as well. Because the daughter apparently is now speaking out about the Clinton Foundation. And when I heard her, I was stunned. It was like watching a robot. I thought it was Hillary Clinton as a puppet. Listen to clip 28 of Chelsea Clinton trying to cover up the Clinton Foundation's, uh, let us say, painted as transparent. Let's listen to 28. It will be even more transparent that to kind of eliminate any questions while we're in this time, we won't take new government funding, um, but that the work will continue as it is. I think that's the right choice for the people who are being affected by that work. Can you believe that that's the voice of the daughter of Hillary Clinton and that she actually said nothing and that she was once paid $500,000 by, think, I think, NBC. Now, why would NBC keep a rat like Al Sharpton on the radio, on the television when everyone knows he's, a, he's as dirty as they come? He is as dirty as they come, Al Sharpton, as despicable as a man could ever be. Why does Jeffrey Emelt keep him on MSNBC? Guess what? You want to hear about this one? Jeffrey Immelt got huge State Department contracts after donating a fortune from General Electric to the Clinton Foundation, the government media complex. Michael Savage, beware the government media complex. A speech I gave at the Commonwealth Club in 1998. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Okay. No, governments, NGOs, foundations who believe the work we do is important. Um, so whether that's around women and girls or smallholder farmers or the injectable, long-lasting, reversible contraceptives that we talked about earlier. And so what the Clinton Foundation has said is that we will be kind of even more transparent, um, even though Transparency International and others have said we're among the most transparent foundations. We'll disclose donors at a quarterly basis. Well, they are the most amongst the most transparent foundations now. Now that we know that 85 cents out of every dollar donated to the parents' foundation is for their own personal use, they are very transparent. Now that we know that a uranium mine or two or ten or a hundred or a thousand, in other words, all the uranium in the earth in the United States of America was gobbled up by a bunch of corrupt businessmen who have no nation, transnational thieves, and sold to the Russians, had to be approved, of course, by the government. Government, in this case, was Hillary Clinton's State Department, but she had nothing to do with it. She didn't even know about it. She didn't approve it. She had buffers. You ever watch The Godfather when they try to get uh, Michael Corleone? They couldn't get Michael Corleone because he got a lot of buffers between him and the street. Buffers. You know what a buffer is? A buffer is a front man. We are living in a mafia state. We've heard that Russia was a mafia state. We keep hearing Russia's this, Russia's that. I don't believe anyone could have sold off the uranium in Russia to the United States without being arrested, imprisoned, and executed. I don't believe a sane nation on earth would permit this to go on. But we're not a sane nation. We've lost our sanity. We lost our sanity a long time ago. And now they're refiling their tax returns. Again, I want to ask you a question, the most diehard liberal out there. And be fair to me. Don't call the show because I don't expect you to call. I don't want to argue with you. If you filed a false tax return hiding income or not paying the full taxes on, a, on income and you got caught by the IRS, would they let you refile? What would they do? They give you time to refile? Do you think so? 
Is there a liberal listening to this show, the Savage Nation, will tell me that you would still vote for Hillary Clinton? I'd like to know how you could say that to me. I'd like to know how you could ever tell me this woman is worthy of the office of the United States of America. Forget about indicting her for treason or sedition, whatever the case may be, or for fraud or for tax evasion. If any of those apply, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. But to be the president of the United States with this stink emanating from the sewer called the Clinton Foundation? ABC, New York City, Hunter, go ahead, please. What's on your mind? Michael, I am a die. They would never vote for Hillary Clinton. You and I could swap laundry lists of the corruption, and that is why I cannot stand that woman. I would vote for Jeb Bush before I would vote for Hillary Clinton, and I know a lot of liberals that feel the same as me. I hope they're as vocal as me, because I cannot stand her. All right, you can't stand her. Does this uranium story add sufficient to the weight against her, or you already made up? you had already made up your mind? I had already made up my mind, but I can tell you um, it's still, uh, you know, getting punched in the face for the 101st time still makes it hurt more than it did the 100th time. And, and, and it's, just, it's just more reason not to vote for her. Uh, but are you, are you genuinely a liberal or you're just kind of making believe you are in order to make your point and be listened to? No, I'm absolutely a, a liberal. I am that person who's 40 years old and has no mind. As you would say, <laughs> that's very right. funny. Oh, my old joke from the from the from the years ago: where if you if you're not a liberal at uh, twenty, you have no heart. If you're still liberal at forty, you have no mind. <laughs> that old joke. Yo, you've got me pegged. No, I'm 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 not calling in. Yeah, it'd be cute. No, I'm I'm absolutely a liberal. You and I, just, you're really the only conservative uh, person on the radio I listen to. Uh, but yeah, we disagree on just about everything except on Hillary Clinton. I I couldn't with you more with everything you say about her well i don't want to leak this over into the corruption of obama and what he's doing to america because that's a separate story we may disagree i'm sure we would you're probably a diehard uh, supporter of obama but why do you think as if you really are the liberal you say you are why are we hearing all of this about hillary now i really because i think hillary is perceived by many liberals and i know this that she's too conservative uh they they see her as um yeah, just, just too far to the right. They want to All right, so it's what I said. The reason we're seeing the New York Times, Washington Post, New York Magazine jumping on this uranium corruption story, it was because they want someone uh, far more communistic, socialistic, or if you call it progressive, to run for the position, correct? Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree with that exactly. I agree with that 100%. But why are you a liberal? I have to spend a minute or two on this. What is it about liberalism that appeals to you? Well, a lot of it's with social issues. I, I feel... Is, is it all about gay marriage? Be honest with me. No, no, it's not all about gay marriage. But it's, Okay, so what is it about that? I don't understand it. Abortion? Uh, no, it, it's not all abortion. I, I just wish the conservatives would just hand off social issues. And, and also, I feel that... Well, you know, I've defined myself as a sexual libertarian. Have you heard me say that about 100,000 times? Uh, yeah, I've heard, yeah, yeah. I'm, I really don't care about anyone's sexuality as long as they leave children alone. But why do you assume that all conservatives are so uptight when it comes to social issues? Well, I, I, I just, well, I think because conservatives have allowed the religious right to take over that aspect of their party, and I think it turns. Well, the religious right is, is the only counterpoint to the irreligious left. We see, so, I, so that that creates the tension in America that we're all struggling through. Uh, this is why our children's minds are being destroyed. It's because the irreligious left says there is no God, there are no rules, there should be no no morality, and therefore our children are suffering. They drug them and they turn them into what they want them to be. But let's get back to the Hillary thing. One last question. You're just a caller. I'm just a talk show host. In your gut, do you think that Hillary will withdraw from the race? Oh, my God. They're so narcissistic, Michael. As much as I, it's, it's, you know, <laughs> For not having a mind, my my gut says no. Uh, <laughs> You're funny. You keep pushing the point. You and I would have fun drinking a beer together because you keep hammering the same point. I love it. For a guy without a mind, you're doing pretty good. Oh, well, <laughs> well, well, thanks. Because, you know, all arrows point to that she'll have to drop out. But my gut being so narcissistic, I... Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think she is so corrupt and so so above the law. And she has been for so long, the untouchables that she'll never withdraw. Never. These kind of people never admit when they get caught. Never. Never. They have no shame. They have no conscience. They have no character. So why should you, she withdraw? She won't. 
I, 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 like I said, I agree a thousand percent. We see eye to eye on this, Michael. Now, let me ask you something. You say you have no mind, but can you read? <laughs> yeah, I'm a geologist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a geologist, so the uranium ore story must be right up your alley. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it is. It, it is. Uh, you know that some of my best friends are geologists. You didn't know that. Uh, yeah, I've heard you talk. Uh, about that's that. a joke. Come on, you know where that comes from. I'm sending you a free copy of my brilliant new novel called Countdown to Mecca. Uh, my only problem is I don't know if you can read it. It has a lot of three- and four-syllable words in it. Well, well, I'm not as good of a reader as George Bush is. but <laughs> <laughs> You got me there. I know he read books backwards. Uh, I get that one. All right. Hey, look, it's it's been fun. Stay in a line, Hunter. Look, I'm going to laugh as, as much as I can because now we hear Loretta Lynch is confirmed. Now, if you like the corruption and the anti-police, anti-Americanism, the outright hatred for white people that we saw under Eric Holder, get ready for it on uh, on steroids. Because not only is she the first black attorney general woman, but she's also a woman. So now you've got a, a twofer. Black woman, liberal. She is virtually untouchable. So take a guess what's coming to America now. You think it's going to be good for the country? Oh, my God, it gets worse by the day. Is there any good news out there? Why did the Republicans confirm Lynch? Because they're a bunch of spineless sellouts, just like the Democrats. That's why. Are there any liberals out there who would still vote for Hillary Clinton? Why? Let's take a quick call on this and other questions because there's no bigger story in my life. I've never seen anything as corrupt as this. I remember when Bill Clinton in the 90s, remember the story of the Panama Canal being sold to the Chinese? Remember, I mean, the young man who works for me wasn't even born yet. He's 12 years old. He told me a joke last night. I didn't even get it. Someone told me a joke. I heard it. I couldn't even understand it. I had to go to him for the answer because he's under 20. He got the answer for me. I don't even know how it goes. Uh, a 10 a 2 is a 2 a 10? I said, what is that? I didn't even know what that meant. Something these young guys say, I mean, it's a language unto itself. He said, Dr. Savage, you know a 10 a 2 is a 2 a 10? I said, what does that mean? He had to translate that for me, and it's something guys under 30 understand, which I'm not going to even translate, because I thought it was a very sexist thing. A 10 a 2 is a 2 a 10? But anyway, putting that aside, uh, things are rotten all, <laughs> all over. But take a look who's confirming Loretta Lynch. The sellout undertakers. You know, these kind of Republicans, these really clean white guys that look so clean that their skin is pink. You ever see a white man that's so clean he's pink? He's not a white man. These Republicans are pink men. You know, there's a difference between white men and pink men. The leadership of the Republican Party are pink men. They look like poor sign individuals that came from the animal kingdom. And they're so dirty in their dealings that they use brown soap on their skin and it turns pink to cover up what they're really doing. If you think that what Hillary did is bad, you're right. But I wouldn't be surprised that when the other shoe falls, we find out what kind of money the Bush family has been making over the years. You say, Savage, why are you undermining the Republicans? You know why? Just because I'm that kind of guy. A, I'm not a Republican. B, I cannot stand this level of stink. C, I am concerned for the future of the nation. And D, I would like to really know what Jeb Bush has done and would do to this nation before it's too late. But let's stick to the Hillary story. We actually have an individual who says he still will vote for Hillary, and I can see why. I, I actually don't know why. Go ahead. Tell us, uh, Michael. Michael, why would you still vote for Hillary? Hello? The wonderful president and... Wait, wait, hold on. Stop. Michael, the question is why... Did you hear about the scandal that is reporting today from the Post and the Times about the uranium story? Yes, I heard about it, and it, it is a bad blemish on her, but she's still going to be a good president because it's going to be, it's going to be, oh, she's going to bring a whole lot of peace over the Middle East and stuff. Okay, you don't know what you're talking about. What are you, just talking because you don't... Is there something wrong with the other side of your body that you can't let that foulness out of the other side of your body, or what? No, I, Did you have surgery to block the other side of your body that it just came out of your mouth? I, I'm just saying. I right, take a walk. You know, I don't mind arguing 
with liberals. I, I, I would enjoy it like we had this geologist who was very funny, sarcastic, intelligent. But you got a guy like this, you know he's just speaking to, you know, to, to talk, okay? Anyway, 855-407-282, WMAL in Washington. Chris, go ahead, please, make your point. Yeah, I, how much farther to the left does the, uh, the left think the Clintons need to be? I mean, they're dealing with the communists in Russia. Back in the 90s, Bill Clinton was selling military secrets to the Chinese. I mean, mm -hmm. these people are embedded with communism. Well, I remember what happened under Bill Clinton. It's why we are, we are under the threat of a nuclear strike by China. And there is a man's name attached to it. He was the head of the, the Democrat National Committee. Oh, I wish I could remember his name. He was the single largest donor to the uh, Democrat Party. He had started with a small parking meter company in the Bronx. And through uh, political wheelings and dealings, he wound up o owning Loral Space and Technology. Anyone know the name? Once he took over Loral Space and Technology, this is while Bill Clinton was uh, president, he helped the Chinese use American rockets to launch satellites into space. And there was a big argument over it at the time because we said, wait a minute, you can't use American technology developed with American taxpayer dollars to launch satellites and give that to the Chinese because they'll eventually switch it over to military and they'll threaten us. And this man, I don't remember his name, I'm going to find it for you, said, oh, no, the Chinese will never use our rocket technology to launch anything but weather satellites and communication satellites. Well, as you well know, they soon used our rocket technology to launch ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, all because of Bill Clinton's DNC. Does anyone know his name? Because you're going to win a free copy of Countdown to Mecca. He has a name. He's still around. He's a nice grandfatherly type. He looks a little bit like Madoff. A little bit like Madoff. Same type. I'm sure he's a big, big deal in his uh, house of worship. I'm sure when he walks in, they whisper about what an important man he is. Does anyone know who I'm talking about? 855-407-28. We'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. See, today, any thinking American would be in the streets saying that we believe in truth, and justice and the real American way. And Hillary and Bill Clinton should be indicted and investigated for the sale of this uranium ore uh, and the donations to the Clinton Foundation while she was Secretary of State. But we looked up Bernie Schwartz. He has a name. He's still living. Bernie Schwartz is the man who was embroiled in the campaign donation scandal way back in 1998 and the transfer of missile technology to China that occurred in 1996. He was found not guilty in the campaign finance matter after a so-called Justice Department investigation. You know what that means, right? I wonder how much money was given to which foundation for that one. So Laurel was clean as a whistle. Schwartz did nothing wrong. Schwartz is a lifelong New Yorker. Schwartz is married to the former Irene Zandera. Schwartz has two daughters and four grandchildren. God bless them all. They're such good people. I guarantee you they're loved by their neighbors and in their house of worship. I guarantee you when Bernie Schwartz comes into that synagogue, they look at him and whisper what a great man he is because he was exonerated from this alleged transfer of missile technology to China. How could a man who grows up in Bensonhurst with almost nothing, <laughs> what a genius, and look what he made of his life. Look at that. To go from a parking meter shyster to... That level with Bill Clinton, it's enough to make you fail. This is the kind of people that built America. During the breaks, I'm watching the ads here in Florida. People were saying you ought to put this on the air. I saw an ad for a doctor. It reminded me of the doctor my father warned me if you went in for surgery to remove organs and send them to China. That was 40 years ago. I never saw such sleaziness as in Southern Florida. There was another ad for a diamond guy in Boca Raton on the TV. I almost died. I would not only not buy a diamond, this guy is, his name may as well be Fugazi. I mean, his last name may as well be Fugazi. How do these people survive down here? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage.
Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Uranium One became very active in acquiring uranium assets actually in the United States itself. By 2008, 2009, they were a particularly attractive target for the Russian government. They would acquire what amount to 50% of projected uranium output by 2015. That's the author that everyone in the world is paying attention to, Peter Schweitzer, in his forthcoming book about the Clintons and the money and the scandals. And this is the uranium scandal that in any nation would have brought... Uh, a demand for immediate uh, justice. Some countries, the government would have fallen because of a thing like this, because it means the government permitted the Russians to buy the uranium uh, right out from under our nose, so to speak. And it was done while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State. It's a huge scandal. It's probably the great. I don't know of a larger scandal in my lifetime. I really don't. I know that emotionally, when I read about it this morning in the New York Times, Cash flow to Clinton Foundation as Russians pressed for control of uranium company. My immediate thought was this is the kind of story that led and will lead to a revolution. This is the kind of story that led to the Russian Revolution. But it really won't in America. You see, the difference between this nation and Russia of 1916 is that the people are fat here and drugged. The Russians were skinny and starved. In other words, the corruption was so bad under the czar and the systems were so broken under the czar that the people were, were hungry. No one's hungry in America. They're fat, overweight, drugged, entertainment, Disneyland, cruises, stuffing their faces, drugs, entertainment, sports. So they don't even know what's going on. They could care less. But this story will affect the thinking voter. And I don't know what percent of the population that votes is thinking, but I would think that the percent of the population that votes that is thinking wouldn't have voted for this rotten, stinking candidate to begin with, because this is nothing new. There is a sea of filth that anyone could have seen going all the way back to Arkansas. She has never been qualified to be anything other than what she was, which is a carpetbagger and a grifter. And so we're not shocked by this, but I am shocked by this. And others, on one hand, we're not shocked, but on the other hand, the magnitude of it is overwhelming. Why is the magnitude of the uranium story overwhelming? Because it has national security implications. If you sell off the uranium in our own earth to Russia, at the same time she's giving speeches, calling Putin Hitler, she is allegedly approving the transfer of this uranium company to Russia. Do you understand this? Where was Lindsey Graham, that fraud, that two-faced, phony Republican pinko? Another one that's, whose skin is too pink for me. And that's a, a metaphor, by the way. Don't take it in a racial way. Another one, watch out for the pink skin. It's a giveaway. If it's pink, it stinks. Let me put it to you that way. They were a little too clean for me. I don't trust the clean men like Orrin Hatch, who just approved Loretta Lynch. I don't trust guys like this. I never did. They wouldn't let me in their clubs, and I wouldn't join anyway, because I'm more picky than Groucho Marx ever was. When he said famously any club that would have me as a member, I wouldn't join. It was a very funny joke, wasn't it? Take a look at John McCain now, that crazy ma maniac. The man belongs in a straitjacket. A maniac almost caused a revolution in Egypt almost brought about a war between Russia and the United States, and this maniac is still in the Senate. None of them ever quit. Don't you understand that? So if you expect this uranium scandal to bring Hillary to the realization that she's unelectable, you're mistaken. And the reason you're mistaken is you have no idea what psychosis is. I've told you a thousand times that anyone who runs for higher office, basically there's something wrong with them mentally. I don't care how good they are. There is something wrong with anyone who wants to be a politician. Or they're so corrupt that they have no other way to make a living. The human beings I know who are very competent, usually they have a profession or a business, they have no desire to be in politics, which is why we get the level that we get. That's to start with. 
But when you see corruption like this, you have to ask yourself, how can a country survive? How could a country survive? The only one of the bunch on the Republican side that I don't think is as corrupt as this would be the two of them, Rand Paul and Ted Cruz, cannot be this corrupt. It's impossible. Rubio looks to me like he's as, uh, as corruptible as any of them. I don't trust Rubio personally. I don't know him, but I, I mean, I get a bad feeling off Rubio. I think he's a sleazeball. He's the kind of sleazeball only Rush Limbaugh could back. The other two, all right, I would say I don't think there's any corruption in them. There are reasons I'm not attracted to them, but that, that's my own personal opinion. I would vote for Scott Walker until I hear something more from him. But we're focused today on the stink coming out of the Clinton sewer. And in a sane nation, there would be a demand for hearings today. We talked earlier in the last hour that this is nothing new, we said. It goes back to Laurel Space and Technology. When Bernie Schwitz, ah, what a wonderful person. Are you kidding? Came from humble Jewish background in Brooklyn. And look what he made of himself. A man starts out with such little in life. And through hard work and genius, look what he made of himself. So what if he sold technology to China that was allegedly giving them the advantage to bomb America with ICBMs? It was found nothing but right-wing lies. It was put out by those evil anti-Semitic right-wingers. I mean, he was cleared by the Justice Department. He's a wonderful grandfather in Brooklyn. Lives in Manhattan now, not Brooklyn. Wonderful man. If you look at him, a nut looks like Madoff, but a clean Madoff. There was nothing to that scandal of about Loral Space and Technology back in 98. There was nothing but anti-Semitic right-wingers who did it to him. The same anti-Semitic right-wingers that were doing it to Hil Hillary and Bill right now, even though they're not Jewish, they're sort of Jewish. I mean, when Hillary and Bill are picked on, they're honorarily Jewish because they're, they're victims. They're being picked on only because of uh, their religion, even though that's not their religion. It's, it's sort of like their religion. They're persecuted. They're persecuted because she's such a good person. That's what we're talking about. Will it stop one moronic woman from voting for her? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. What are you talking about? That you all do it. You don't know it, ma'am. Do you know what we're talking about here about the sale of, sale of uranium from the United States of America to Russia? And approved by Hillary Clinton's State Department. Who cares? Who cares? They all do it. Now leave me alone. I'm heading off to the salon. I'm getting a touch-up. This is the country. Everyone votes. Everyone's equal. That's why we have Obama as president. Next we'll have something worse. So let me take some calls. WMAL in Washington, D.C. Bruce, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Uh, yes, I'm uh, out here in uh, Morgan Hill, California, KSFO. I worked for uh, Laurel Space and Range during the time period you're talking about. And one of the, uh, when that story broke, one of the high-level program managers swore up and down that nothing was transferred. However, the uh, rank-and-file engineers, when they came back, told me that indeed there was some guidance material that was transferred but they to, to, to the Chinese and this is while Bill Cl Bill Clinton was president and Bernie Schwartz was the single largest donor to the DNC that's the whole point of the story in telling it today because there's nothing new under the sun with these sleaze balls from Arkansas uh, Bernie Schwartz acquired Ford uh, aerospace when Ford the second died his daughters didn't want to have anything to do with the space business. So Bernie bought Ford Aerospace for pennies on a dollar. And then when things got tight and the, the defense system was going downhill, he, he sold it for a huge uh, profit to Lockheed uh, Martin. And the guy always showed up with his entourage late at night. Uh, it was He's a, a wonderful man. It's anti-Semitic of you to even say things like this. I think he should call the ADL on you. <laughs> okay. I really think this is a case for the ADL. I mean, you're picking on a nice Jewish man, Bernie Schwartz. He would never do anything to harm America. You, you know, you're implying he's a profiteer. That's right out of Shakespeare. Well, I'm a lot... Listen to me. I got such contempt for this type of person. You have no idea. I ran away from people like this. I hate them more than you could ever imagine. They're people without countries. I hate them. Do you have any idea that I never say it on the radio? They make my stomach turn. 
But I'm bringing up Bernie Schwartz because it went on then and it's going on now. So then they sold space technology to China and they bought off the Justice Department and said he did nothing wrong. Now they sell uranium to Russia. And who's going to investigate Hillary Clinton on this? Tell me who do you think will do it. Loretta Lynch! Take a guess who's going to investigate this. If these pink Republicans ever get around to investigating Hillary Clinton's, did she ever approve it? Was she involved with it? Did she have anything to do with it? Are her fingers on her? Any fingerprints? Is there even a smudge? Is there even a hem of her skirt to touch this? We're going to investigate it. Take a guess who's going to determine it. Loretta Lynch, who they just approved today. It's a circle, you know what. I can't use the word because it'll be implied to be something that it isn't. It's all a game. They can get away with murder. They can destroy a country and nothing happens. So why do you think that this will bring Hillary Clinton down to her knees? Tell me why. <laughs> you know, they're just talking about me because I'm a little old woman. <laughs> well, you know, this is the kind of thing in a campaign season that we're used to when we're little women like this, trying to make it better for girls in Africa. <laughs> and don't think that the women won't buy it. I don't know where this ends. I don't know how a nation could survive this. I honestly don't know if we have survived it. See, you say, I don't know if it can. Have we survived it? You're telling me we have survived this kind of corruption? Have we survived it? I'm not sure we have. Take a look at this creep in the White House and what he continues to do to this country with the immigration out of control. And by the way, we investigated this. And although we know illegal immigration has been a big, big problem for this country for a long time, Obama did something no president before him has done. Between the years 2010 and now, the predominant number of immigrants allowed into the country are from Africa, the Middle East, and China. Did you know that? Europeans need not apply. Now, why would Obama be against Europeans from immigrating to America? Why would he want Africans? Why would he want Middle Easterners? Why would he want Chinese? Well, because he wants to transform America. You know, America's not a nation that he ever liked. It's a nation he hated. He said he hated the country. And the wife said that she was never proud to be an American until she became first lady. So in other words, in order to make an omelet, you got to break a few eggs. And America's the egg that they're working on breaking, a dozen at a time. KKOB, Steve, fire away. You're on the Savage Nation. Make it quickly, please. Where Where's line nine? I said he's on. Is he there or not? Gone. Gone with the wind. All right. Is he there or not? All right. Well, go ahead, Steve. I right, turn it off. A real d dummy. What kind of call screening am I getting today? Uh, he's on. He's not on. What is it? A high school radio show? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855 400 Savage. 855 400 7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets gold and silver. Call 800 B U I C O I N. Wall Street. Clinton, Clinton Foundation, Clinton Foundation fraud. It's unbelievable. And the Republicans are silent because when the shoe drops, the other shoe drops, when Schweitzer writes his next book, which is coming out next, uh, I, he says in the autumn, he's going to look into Jeb Bush's games. And here we read on World Net Daily, Wall Street analyst uncovers Clinton Foundation fraud. Hillary's charity already under scrutiny for foreign donations. Then you see related stories. GE's Jeffrey Emmelt roped into Clinton cash scandal, etc. This is all tied into the email scandal. Why do you think she erased 30,000 emails? Now you know the rest of the story. I mean, you don't have to be that smart or a right winger to see the connection. Why did she erase 30,000 emails? Who would erase 30,000 emails if they had nothing to hide? So, <clears throat> okay, we know she's corrupt. We know that she stinks. We know that uh, there's a history of this and that she'll destroy America to an extent you can't even imagine. She ran her own private email server while Secretary of State. She traveled all over the world to raise foreign contributions to her own foundation, which now totals over $2 billion. She then deletes all her personal emails. Well, that leads me to only one conclusion. We should all vote for her because she's a woman. 
We should vote for her because America needs a woman. Doesn't matter what kind of woman. What it matters is that she's a woman. We had our first black president. Look how well that's worked out uh, over these last years. And so, therefore, I think uh, to vote for this greedy individual uh, makes sense. We should use her for sure. And anyone who's a liberal and still votes for this, you know, uh, I, I don't you ought to have your head examined. And Hillary is what she has always been and what she always will be. The foundation is all about greasing the skids for those who want political access to the government. Chaos has followed her wherever she has appeared. Let me trace it for you. Let's put it in context. While she was Secretary of State, she pushed the Arab Spring Theory. And how did that work out for the world? While she was Secretary of State, uh, Mohammed Gaddafi was uh, executed of Libya. And he warned us. He said, I may be a bad guy, but don't kill me, he begged. Because if you kill me, Libya will descend into chaos. It will become another Somalia ruled by warlords. That's exactly what Hillary has wrought. Egypt, she brought about the Muslim Brotherhood. Luckily, the Egyptian people saw through her and pushed the Muslim Brotherhood out and actually put the president who put them in in jail. They actually put Morsi in prison. Could you believe this? The former president of Egypt is now, is it Morsi? I may have confused him with the current one, pardon me. But the president who was the buddy of the Muslim Brotherhood, who's a friend of Hillary Clinton, who's a friend of Barack Obama, is now in prison. That's how much they trust the government that Hillary wanted to enact, to erect in Egypt. So she has brought about a disaster with Russia as well, calling Putin Hitler, literally trying to trigger World War III. All the while, uranium was being transferred to Russian interests uh, under her watch. How could you vote for her? I could see electing a Democrat if you're a Democrat, but how? why her? I don't, I don't understand how you can lock yourself in like that. I am politically an independent, but I'm very conservative. Let me put it to you that way. But do I sit here and support every Republican, even when they're caught in a scandal? You never heard me do that. To me, if they're corrupt, they're corrupt. How could you sit there and say, oh, well, she's a woman or a Democrat, vote for her anyway. Are you that stupid? Yes. Yes. Yes, you are. Have I finished this topic? Is it time to move on to meatballs and dogs? No. I have more to tell you the minute I come back right here on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hillary summoned to a May 18th public hearing. But it's not about the uranium scandal. They're still catching up with three scandals ago. A House investigatory panel has summoned Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton to testify in a May 18th public hearing about our use of a private email server during a tenure as Secretary of State. You know that they're going to treat it with kid gloves. And you know they'll exonerate her and she'll look like a victim. That's the breaking news. Now, yesterday on the Savage Nation, I read a laudatory letter, a letter. I, I, I lauded the letter by uh, Ray Flores, a gentleman I had never heard of, an SEIU community organizer, lifetime Democrat. And he wrote a, a heartfelt letter that struck me as so sincere, saying that we're living through a Christian holocaust. Where are you on this, President Obama? Why do you say nothing? I never met Mr. Flores, but he's calling the show right now out of the blue. And it's an honor for me to speak with this gentleman. Ray, welcome to the program. Thank you for calling. Thank you, Doctor. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, you wrote the letter for the obvious reasons. It's not about Obama. It's about the Christians. They're being slaughtered and no one's doing anything. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Have you heard from anyone in the administration, Mr. Flores? No, no, and I don't expect to. It's just uh, their modus operandi. They just, you know, they ignore everything and they, they run them up as any way they want. Now, look, Ray, you're not a right winger. You're not a conservative. You're not a Republican. You're a, you're a, <laughs> you, you're a Spanish speaking writer for the Chicago Tribune Spanish language news daily 10 years ago, communication specialist with SEIU. And you're that jaundiced on this administration. Isn't that true? Well, actually, Doctor, I write for the Wander newspaper now. It's the WanderPress dot com. It's in CNS News dot com. Uh, I'm more conservative, but I, I identify as Catholic more so than anything. I was working uh, at the union at that time. Right now, I work for the American Life League as a pro life activist. So I, I sort of had a, a turnaround, if you will. Not that I ever believed in the leftist ideals. I was just trying to help the underdog. But that's how I got a good uh, idea of how crooked the left, the Acorn, the Chicago Alinsky, 
uh, community was. And um, if you ever read a book called No Higher Power from Phyllis Schlafly, I contributed some really important documents in the appendix that outline how even some of the Catholic bishops helped Obama and Acorn and FDAU basically planted the seeds back in the mid-'80s to, to create the kind of nightmare this nation is living under right now. Well, you write in your open letter to Obama on our generation's Holocaust, you write the following. You say, entire schools of children are being set on fire, women are being gang-raped, and men are beheaded in front of video cameras for all the world to see. ISIS terrorists are mocking and laughing at us as they slaughter our Christian brothers and sisters of all ages. And you say, are you telling me that somehow you aren't getting the same message we're all getting? Mr. President, you plea, would you come out and denounce these acts of terrorism and provide the necessary military aid to stop this genocide? That's what we're all asking, Mr. Flores. Why does he not mention this Holocaust against Christians, in your opinion? Well, I'm just waiting for, for that to happen here in our church when I take my family and children to Mass on Sunday. I'm just waiting for some nut terrorists to come in and, and start either shooting or, or wielding a knife or an axe. And it's just a matter of time before it happens here on our, on our shores. So I'm just waiting to see what is it going to take for Obama to, to at least say something. And he just seems to be aloof or com completely complicit with the whole thing and supporting. So notice what you said, either aloof or complicit, and that's the part of it that bu bugs us all. We don't know, but the end result is the same. If he's not acting against them, then he's really enabling them. Correct. Fl Mr. Flores, I want to ask you something. You are a Hispanic, obviously. You're a devout Catholic, obviously. You care very much about your religion and your family, which is incredible. It's the bedrock of America. I was recently on the beach in Southern California about, um, I don't know, two months ago, and I was looking down on a Sunday at all the families, and it's largely Hispanic families down there in the volleyball beaches and uh, the area that I was looking at. And, you know, I got a feeling of strength about America. I looked at the Hispanic men, and I said, do you actually think that these guys are going to let the Muslims come here and convert them to, Christ to, to Islam? Do you think these Hispanic guys are going to roll over? I didn't think so. I felt a tremendous sense of hope for the country. Am I crazy or what? No, I think the one thing, and even with the illegals, the one thing that we have in common, meaning us conservative-minded people, is that even if they're not very well formed in the faith, they hold things like traditional marriage, and they, they are opposed to abortion. They at least believe in those things deep in their hearts somewhere. So I think that's the hope, that we shouldn't just throw the towel in and say all these illegals and, and immigrants are going to vote Democratic and just throw the towel in. No, we have the opportunity to teach those people the truth, even if we have to do it in their own language. And we're going to fight against ISIS, and we're going to fight against the left that's trying to homosexualize and abort all our children. Wow. I can see that you're not going to be invited to the White House Christmas party uh, where Johnny has two fathers. In no way, no way. Well, I'm very thrilled that you listen to the show. I would assume that since it's heard in, MA, uh, in Washington on MAL, that some people of importance are listening to the Savage Nation. And I'm thrilled that you call. And if you'll be kind enough to accept it, I'd like to send you a copy of my forthcoming novel, which is right on the money here, called Countdown to Mecca. It's a warning at the end of the day. And I want to thank you again, Mr. Flores, for calling the Savage Nation. And now I want to move on to something that's very important, which is 20 things I trust more than Hillary Clinton. 20 things I trust more than Hillary Clinton. They include a porcupine with a pet me sign. 20 things I trust more than Hillary Clinton includes Bill Clinton with my teenage daughter. 20 things I trust more than Hillary Clinton includes Mexican tap water, an elevator ride with Ray Rice. 20 things I trust more than Hillary Clinton include taking pills or a drink offered by Bill Cosby. 20 things I trust more than Hillary Clinton includes a Hillary Clinton war story reported by uh, Brian Williams. Things I trust more than Hillary Clinton include gas station sushi, Jimmy Carter with the economy, an ISIS traveler on a motorcycle. Things I trust more than Hillary Clinton include Pete Carroll coaching decisions, eating an apple from an orchard at Fukushima reactor number four. Yes, things I trust more than Hillary Clinton include my hitching a ride from a guy in a goalie mask or the ingredients in a baseball stadium hot dog. Things I trust more than Hillary Clinton would include Nancy Pelosi's grip on reality. Or finally, something I trust more than Hillary Clinton would include Jerry Sandusky as a Boy Scout leader. <laughs> oh, my God, what a world we're in. Let's go to some of the callers on the Savage Nation. 
KSFO Radio, San Francisco, Line 6. Go ahead, please. Michael, Michael, the culture is trying to do to the Christian Archbishop of San Francisco what ISIS is doing to the Christians overseas. Well, you heard me defend the Archbishop last week, didn't you? Precisely. Yes, I did, Dr. Savage. And, you know, he is the last man standing, in my view, in protecting... Well, who are these hundred prominent Catholics in San Francisco who took out that despicable self-serving ad? All of these uh, alleged important Catholics who hate him. And we don't know who paid for the ad behind them either, do we? Nor do we know what they're trying to get as a result of the ad, do we? What access are they trying to buy into the Obama administration? Do, do we know? Michael, this is the mob versus the Christian church. This is an attempt to overcome the authority of Christians in American society and the power of the Constitution under the First Amendment, the free exercise of religion. I believe people want to tear down this archbishop. To yeah, he's the only one standing up for the actual teachings of the, Christ, of the Catholic Church. So what, that's not good enough? If they don't like the Catholic Church, they can become an Episcopalian. They can have a lesbian minister and they'd be in business. Michael, and more than that, if they win here, we lose the First Amendment, because if a church cannot say no to... Well, no, the if they don't like the Archbishop of San Francisco and they want to tear him down, these hundred prominent Catholics, I suggest they become Reformed Jews and go to Temple Emmanuel. They'll have everything they want right there. They can join Dianne Feinstein and sitting in the pew there. But you know what, Michael? The Jews would lose. The Jews would lose... The newspaper reporters would lose because we'd have no more free press. Any civil libertarian in the Bay Area or in America is going to lose. How, how is the archbishop handling the, the scandal uh, of these people attacking him mercilessly like this, these despicable hundred top Catholics? How could they do this to him? I mean, how is he handling it is what I want to know. He's going to the highest source, Michael. Number one, I know he's saying this is God's will. This is God's way. This is the Catholic belief. And we're not going to listen to these uh, pressure. This is basically a mafia attacking him, isn't it? It is the mob versus order. It is the mob versus the Constitution. It is the mob versus they are the power brokers in San Francisco. They all belong to the same clan that has ruined that once beautiful city. They're part of the corruption of that city, in my estimation. That what that's what makes San Francisco a laughing stock of the world. I agree, Michael, but as a constitutional law attorney myself, I can't help but wonder if there are bigger ramifications here beyond San Francisco. These are the same people, i got to tell you, it's very personal for me. Some of these people are the same people who got together with the Board of Supervisors in that city of mine, and a number of years ago had the Board of Supervisors of the city of San Francisco vote a vote of censure against me, Michael Savage, for speaking the truth. Did you know that? I did. And Michael Did you know that they attacked me as a radio host? I was much as much of a threat to them as the archbishop is today because I spoke out against the attitudes they're trying to promulgate and push down our children's throats? Michael, you and I have a personal link. Twenty years ago I was in a college in San Francisco and a group of us students, when you were starting out, booked you to come speak at our university. You probably don't know it or remember it, but you're at a great producer named Mr. Rapp, who we worked with over four meetings. And this university canceled summarily your appearance. And we had to go back to your producer and say, you know what, it's off. He's not welcome after four meetings and planning. So we have common history, Michael. Yeah, no, I faced a lot of persecution in San Francisco. Do you know that I was once invited by a, a, a very orthodox rabbi to speak, and then he disinvited me because he was afraid of the pressure from the homosexual lobby in San Francisco? Did you know that? I'm not surprised. Another one who poses like he's a man of the, of the cloth and an honorable man. I never spoke with him again. I lost all respect for Rabbi Lipner at that time, another self-serving uh, religious man. You know how you win, Michael, though? I think you win by praying for that rabbi. I think no, I, I don't pray for people. I see that's where you and I differ. See, Christians forgive and turn the other cheek. Uh, I'm like the Irish uh, with Alzheimer's who never forget their enemies. Yeah, I don't you know that. You know the old joke. What's the last thing an Irishman with Alzheimer's remembers? I can't remember. His out. Al ah, very funny. The last thing an Irishman with Alzheimer's remembers is his enemies. Oh, there you go. Well, hey, but if, Mike, actually, it can apply to it can apply to any. Uh, ethnicity. It's a funny joke, and most people laugh at it if they have a sense of humor. Of course, people will take it and say I'm attacking Alzheimer's patients now.
Look, I'm a Look, Cy, this is terrible. You're you're an, a constitutional lawyer in San Francisco? I am. Well, in the East Bay, yes. Do we know each other? I mean, are we uh, at all socially connected? Have we met recently or not since 20 years? 20 years ago, I was a college student. That was it. We said. Do you know my, my friend and lawyer, Dan Horowitz? I don't. I met him once briefly, but no, I don't know him. We have no, you know. We a wonderful know. lawyer. I wish you'd get in touch with him. I'd like to take you and him out to dinner. Happy so I stay in the line. I'm sending you my latest novel. It'll be out in exactly two weeks. Countdown to Mecca. It's going to be a blockbuster because it has so much truth and fiction uh, that I couldn't write in nonfiction. The time right now is about 46, 47 minutes after the hour. The issue is Hillary and Bill Clinton embroiled in the sale of uranium rights to Russia while she was Secretary of State. It's a monstrous story. It stinks to high heaven. And the entire world with a brain, that is the world with a brain, is talking about it. I hope you're part of that world with a brain. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. All right, so Bill and Hillary Clinton got caught with their hands in the cookie jar, violated our national security interests. It doesn't get any worse, right? But don't worry about it. The reason they're not worried is quite simple. Same reason Obama's not worried about Congress. He's flooding America with illegal aliens as quickly as possible. They have no voter ID every time Republicans have tried to pay, the good Republicans have tried to pass voter ID laws, which, by the way, every sane nation on earth has. I don't know how anyone would argue against it. Without voter ID laws and illegal aliens flooding into the polls, Hillary will win. That's all she cares about. They'll buy the votes. And so that's why the country is, is riddled with the bull weevils. I mean, uh, how are you going to solve this problem? 855-407-282 is the phone number. Sometimes I get up and I say, why do I bother doing this? I don't know, and yet I get up and I do it stronger each day than I did it the day before. What do you mean? I'm going to just give up? I'm going to roll over and say it's hopeless? I'm not going to do it. You know I have a Savage Scholarship Fund. I'm giving out $100,000 to five winners over two years. Admittedly, it's not as much as the Melissa and Bill Gates Foundation or as big as the uh, Clinton Foundation, but I do the best I can. Here's one of the winners. You're not, I can only get into a part of it. I want you to have hope. It's called Why I Still Love America. He says, I'm a conservative majoring in social work. I'm sickened by the misinformation the professors require us to learn, but I've always made it my goal to present the other side in class so the other students could see at least a glimpse of reality. One day, I made the mistake of voicing a concern about affirmative action not being fair and equal like we espouse it to be, and the classroom came to an abrupt halt. The professor literally started screaming at me, stamping her feet, pointing at me, and almost spitting her words about how wrong I was. She let other students join in attacking me. When she finally stopped, she said the class was over. I thought I was going to be kicked out of the program. I knew that complaining would, I knew that complaining would be even worse because this field is so dominated by liberals, and I just wanted to quit. But I really believe that the social work field needs more conservative voices, and I wondered how many more were bullied out of the field before me. Fortunately, I'm a full-blooded American, and in the America I know and love, we don't quit, do we? That's who we are, and that's what I love the most. We are strong because all throughout history, when our ideals were under attack, whether at home or abroad, we kept fighting. We put our heads together and got to work. And what truly makes us great is what we've always been striving and fighting for. America doesn't fight to destroy. We fight to unite and to build, and always above all, we fight for freedom. We are a nation created under God. But even as a nation created to be free, and even though we allow our citizens to define who God is for themselves, we simply can't allow our Constitution and our rights to be violated. We are blessed to live under the United States Constitution. He goes on. There's another page. It's from a student. I don't know who it is. An applicant to the Savage Scholarship Fund. He's going into the stack, I believe, of winners. I wish I had the money to give every applicant who was good uh, a grant, but I don't. Because I'm not Hillary Clinton. I don't have unlimited money, nor do I have unlimited time, nor does America have unlimited time. Thank you for listening. I hope it was worth your while. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. If three million of us went to Washington with pool cues in our hand, maybe we could save America. Welcome to The Savage Nation. To play pool, of course, on the White House lawn. Yes, indeedy, what a nation. There's not a nation on earth that I know of that would tolerate such a stink that is emanating from the Clinton Foundation. Can you believe that this woman has such a lack of empathy for reality that she wouldn't just hide in shame and run away? I mean, even the New York Times, Washington Post, New York Magazine are just wringing their hands saying, how is this even possible? So you got to keep fighting. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And you say, well, okay, don't count your blessings because if she leaves, we'll probably get someone even worse. That could happen. Elizabeth Warren, known as uh, affectionately as Focahontas, the fake Indian. I think I may have more Native American blood than she does, incidentally. But I never used it for affirmative action purposes. Uh, the thing is, if they bring Hillary down or if she resigns, which I doubt she will do, by the way, she has no sense of... Uh, a social conscience, none whatsoever in my estimation. Uh, who's going to run? Who's going to be a candidate? O'Malley? Who is O'Malley? I don't even know who he is. Some un un unknown guy from Maryland. I don't know. Uh, plays a guitar. Looks good with an undershirt on. I mean, that's. I guess this is qualified. Any, who's going to run? What a country. Look at what. Why don't they just pick someone who shows a, a butt implant like they do in South America? Why don't they just pick a woman with a great butt implant from a... Uh, from the streets of America, from one of the gutter, ghettos, and say that she should be America because she has the best uh, butt implant. This is what they do in South America. They run big high, high poll numbers. She can get on Oprah, Fox News, whatever, Martha Washington. I guarantee you Murdoch would invite her over. Roger Ailes would have her to dinner. And therefore, the next thing you know, uh, she could be the president. That's what we deserve. That's what the level we're at now. But it doesn't mean that those of us with a brain and a conscience are going to stop thinking and talking. We're not going to. And that brings us to you now on the Savage Nation. The phone number is 855-407-282. The uh, uranium scandal is big enough that it would bring down anyone in any sane nation. If a scandal like this emerged, let us say, in France, that candidate would not only be forced to withdraw, there'd be an immediate trial and the person would probably go to jail. I can guarantee you the French would put a person in prison who use their public office to enable their husband, for example, to profit to this extent. There's no question the French would be in the streets. The Italians would be in the streets. Where is America on this? Why? It's because she's a woman and a Democrat that you don't care about it? Let's take some calls. BAPW, BAP Radio in Dallas, Texas. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Linda, go ahead, please. Oh, Dr. Savage, I cannot thank you enough for all that you do. I want you to know that I have been an activist since 2007. I campaigned for conservative candidates, and I've been working very hard. Today, I was just so depressed that I was ready to throw in the towel. And you said something today. Why do you keep on coming on the radio? And you know what? You have given me the courage. I will continue to campaign and fight for conservatives until my last breath because of what you said today. Well, I don't know what Thank I said you. today. I, all I said to you was, why do I go on the radio? What did I say? I don't even remember. Why do you go on? Because you love this country just like I do. And you know what? I will be like you. I will continue to... It doesn't matter if you feel hopeless that you think that it's, it's, it can't be saved. It can always be saved. What's the, the saying, hope rings eternal? That's right. Hope rings eternal. You know, let's say you're on a leaky lifeboat and you don't think there's any chance of bailing that boat and you're all, and you're, the boat's going to go down and you're going to die. Do you stop bailing? No. Do you throw yourself into the water and say, I give up? No. No, you hang on, you bail the boat, you pray a big ship comes along and saves you or whatever. But you, the human spirit is such that you keep fighting. It's in the spirit of the human being to fight. I'll give you a heartbreaking story. I was walking this morning where I'm staying out in the street of a little town, and I saw a baby bird on the sidewalk in the hot sun chirping away. It had fallen out of a nest. I knew this bird couldn't survive. And I said to myself, is this bird just going to chirp and wait for its mother to come find it and pick it up? A few seconds later, the bird hopped over to the bushes where the other birds were. 
The bird didn't give up. It's in every living thing to keep living, Linda. Do you understand that? Oh, yes, I do, because I will not live under tyranny or communism, and I will fight to my last breath. And like I said, I just got so depressed today that I was going to... Wait, why it. today? Wait, wait, what happened today? You mean the uranium scandal of the Clintons? That it was, so, it was so dirty that even you, could, you couldn't take it anymore? You know why? Because she has been corrupt since Arkansas. I've been following them since Arkansas. And you know what? There's so much corruption in this country. Sometimes you feel it's like a tsunami. Yes, if you let it get to you and you see the filth posing as clean, it's enough to make you sick. There she is, Hillary Clinton. And there's the daughter now. Did you see the daughter, a twin? Did you see the daughter speaking like she's clean as the driven snow with the Clinton Foundation? Did you see that one, the daughter they dragged into this? She's just as dirty, and so is her husband. Uh, another one, a twin like the mother with the same voice. It was frightening. It was like out of a horror movie. Did you hear the daughter's voice today? I never heard her speak. Wait, listen to this. I thought that this was like a, like a puppet. Listen to clip 28. You're not going to believe this voice. Listen. It will be even more transparent that to you know, eliminate any questions while we're in this time, we won't take new government funding. Um, but that the work will continue as it is. I think that's the right choice for the people who are being affected by that work. Now, she said nothing, just like the mother. It's as though on the knee of the mother, from the mother's milk onward, she was trained to lie and say nothing and act as though she's clean as the driven snow. Listen to the next one. This is Hillary Clinton's daughter, Chelsea, who, if you remember the history of this family, there's an awful lot to remember about this family. But listen to 29. We fresh. have always partnered with you know, governments, NGOs, foundations who believe the work that we do is important. Um, so whether that's around women and girls or smallholder farmers or the injectable, long-lasting, reversible contraceptives that we talked about earlier. And so what the Clinton Foundation has said is that we will be kind of even more transparent, um, even though Transparency International and others have said we're among the most transparent foundations. We'll disclose donors at a quarterly basis. Transparent Foundation, indeed. Now the Schweitzer's book is coming out. They're going to be more transparent than ever, Linda. So don't give up so fast. I think the stink is so great that even Democrats are abandoning Hillary Clinton, Linda. I promise you. But, but let me tell you this. Wait until Schweitzer does his expose on Jeb Bush. That's okay, because none of us, are, none of us in my community uh, support Jeb Bush. No, I wouldn't support Jeb Bush for... Any reason whatsoever. He, I called him Barack Bush for a reason the other day. He, he actually agrees with Obama on mo most of his policies. Did you hear Jeb Bush's statement the other day that actually uh, my jaw dropped? Where he, he got up and he not only supported Obama on illegal immigration, he said the NSA snooping is the best part of Obama's legacy in clip four. Listen to it carefully. I would say the best part of the Obama administration would be his continuance of the protections of the homeland using, you know, the big metadata programs, the NSA being enhanced, advancing this, even though he never defends it, even though he never openly admits it, there has been uh, a continuation of, of a very important service, which is the first obligation, I think, of our national government is to keep us safe. Another pink man, another liar through and through, supporting Obama's expansion of his brothers, that is Bush's brothers, uh, Patriot Act, where they're now spying on every American's email. Every utterance that you make, as you know, is being monitored by a bunch of scum. You know, I curse them when I pick up a phone. Did you know that? I imagine that there's some kid out of Columbia somewhere, some piece of garbage who was raised on drugs, a drug addict, probably, you know, Adderall or one of those drugs that they give the kids, who thinks that she's wonderful by spying on people. I curse them. You know what I say to them? Hey, whoever's listening in on this conversation, let me tell you something. The day is going to come. You're going to be tried for crimes against humanity. I hope to God you wind up in the gallows for what you're doing to me. And if 10 million of us said that every day to the spies in the NSA, we can take the country back. You don't understand that we have the power to win. You don't understand that you have the power, whether it be in a supermarket, as I do here on the on the radio show. I, Of course, I have a, the bully pulpit, as so to speak. I have the microphone, the radio. Sure, great, wonderful. One man. One man speaking out like against this nightmare that we're living through. But you have the power. You could be on a supermarket line and sound off. Do you know that? 
You could speak to the clerk and make the people around you very uncomfortable. And don't think it won't have an effect. Think about the power of 5 million women in supermarkets tomorrow when they go shopping for groceries saying to the clerk, did you hear about Hillary Clinton selling uranium to the Russians in order for money to go uh, uh, to Bill Clinton? Did you hear about that? You didn't hear about Hillary Clinton's uranium scandal? Do you know what 5 million women could do for the mindset of this country if they said that? Or on an airplane? Anywhere you go, you can start talking about the stink. You can take it back. I'm telling you, you can do something about it. Anyway, I'm an idealist. At the end of the day, I'm still a social worker. You don't know I was once a social worker in New York, in New York on the Upper West Side. And I uh, was a young man who believed that I could save people who were poor till I found out that most of them were thieves. They were living better than I was. That was one of the first steps I took away from socialism and liberalism as a youngster. Because at uh, 20, I had no mind. I was just a liberal kid. I didn't know. I didn't know any better. I loved America, but I had no idea how corrupt the country was. And so I took a job as a social worker, and I saw how they were ripping off the system, living better than I was as a, as a young college graduate. And that was the beginning of my awakening. And you can change things yourself every step of the way, wherever you are, in whatever uh, walk of life you're in. All right. It's the Savage Nation, 855-487-282. The minute I come back, I want to tell you about my very important book, Countdown to Mecca. It's so important. It's so on target. It's about Iran and its attempt to get a nuclear bomb and a group of generals, U.S. generals, who plot to set off a world war by bombing Mecca and how Jack Hatfield overhears this and feverishly races to stop such an insane act, knowing it would bring about the end of the world. The minute I return right here on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Let me explain something to you. You know, there have been some books in history that have changed the course of human events. I can name a few that I've read in my life. I, you know, one was about the meatpacking industry. At the turn of the 1900s, it exposed uh, the filthy food industry, and it, it brought us the uh, food safety laws. Upton Sinclair wrote it. Rachel Carson's book, Silent Spring, changed the mind of the whole world. Just the title alone, Silent Spring. What was she saying? Pesticides were killing the birds, and we wake up one day to a silent spring. She started the entire environmental movement. And for those of you who don't understand the importance of it, I pity you. Don't assume that if you hear the environmental, they're all wackos. I've spent a good portion of my life rescuing rainforests, etc., so I don't want to go into that. But that book woke people up. There are books that wake people up. I wrote Countdown to Mecca to wake you up to what's at stake in the world right now. Islam threatens to take over the entire world. Unless radical Islam is stopped, I, I as sure as I'm sitting here, they will take over the entire world because we have people on our side who are passive cowards or, or, or overt operatives of Islam in this government. And I'm not alone in this opinion. Now, I've said this many times. I've alluded to it many times on the radio and in some of my books. But there are things that I want to say that I couldn't say that I do say in this book called Countdown to Mecca because it's fiction. But my fiction is based on good research. I'm originally a scientist, and I research things very well. And so I take you to Israel in the middle of the book, and I'm going to give you the germ of the plot. It's a group of generals, CIA agents, and Israeli Mossad who are plotting and arguing over whether to blow up is, uh, uh, Mecca. And I want to read you the germ of the book because you have to understand what's at stake here. So now they go down in a hangar. And they get in there, and they're in a uh, down below. Inside were six pensive-looking men, four Israelis and two Americans. Both of the Americans were CIA agents in their 40s. Two of the Israelis were of the same age, both agents with the Israeli Mossad. But the other two Israelis were 10 years younger than the rest, both of them nuclear physicists working for the Israeli government. They were also brothers, though this wasn't immediately obvious to look at them, with one of them being orthodox while the other was clearly a Hasidic Jew, with the curled side locks of hair hanging down in front of his ears. Both of them worked at the Negev nuclear plant, where the entire world understood that Israel had probably manufactured 
close to 200 nuclear weapons since the plant had first gone online in the late 1950s. In the basement of the plant, several levels down, the Israelis also ran chemical and bacteriological weapons programs. These were launched in the middle 1960s when there was concern about the widespread destruction the high-yield bombs would cause, as well as decades of lingering radiation. Nerve agents, blood agents, and choking agents were produced here, along with disease agents ranging from anthrax to Ebola. There was a secondary reason for producing these other weapons. In the, even, in the event of an attack from any of its neighbors, the bomb runs would release these toxins and cause untold devastation in those border nations. Ashlock, now he's the general now behind the plot. Ashlock said, I take it we're all here then because we've decided to go through with this. One of the CIA men, a gruff-looking fellow wearing a Yankees cap with gnarled hands and a sunburned face, shook his head, jerking his thumb at the Hasid. Curly here has got cold feet. Watch your mouth, said the Hasid's older brother. He has valid points. The older brother was tall and thin, scholarly looking, with a prominent nose and thick black hair. His name was Colton. I'm going to pause right there. I wanted you to see what's in store for you with a book that's going to make you sweat and keep you up at night. Because sometimes fiction is the only way to get a message across. And the name of the book is Countdown to Mecca. I don't want to give the whole plot away. And it's uh, the last in the Jack Hatfield series. I'm not doing them anymore. I don't have it in me, and I don't want to do any more of them. It's over. And you know why it's over? Because we're going to be over very soon unless somebody speaks the truth to what's going on in this world. If you think that ISIS is an anomaly, if you think Obama's inability or unwillingness to crush ISIS is a product of his passivity, then you, my friend, may as well buy a prayer rug and learn Arabic. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Followed by an, uh, a pledge to uh, donate $100 million more. So the question is, is this really about the corruption that is emanating from the sewer called the Clinton Foundation? Or is it really a desire to replace Hillary Clinton, the most corrupt of all candidates in modern American history, as far as I can tell, uh, with someone not as corrupt, but more to the left of her than the New York Times, the Washington Post, uh, you know what I'm saying? In other words, they want a so-called progressive, which is a code word for socialist, communist, uh, whatever you wish. As you know, American political campaigns are barred from accepting foreign donations. But foreigners may give to foundations in the United States. So Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Clinton Foundation, Uranium One, selling off the land rights in the United States of America to Russia in the form of a national security issue, national security issue, or I should say a strategic medal with national security implications of very grave nature, sold off to Russia right out of our own earth. You couldn't write a novel with a story as pronouncedly shocking as this. I just published, uh, my book will be out in three weeks. I saw yesterday a jump from number 10,000 to, I don't know, 500, Countdown to Mecca. If anyone wants to write a novel, all you have to do is pick up the uranium scandal of Hillary, Bill, and the uh, Clinton Foundation, the Russians, the uh, Canadians. You couldn't invent a story like this. Now, I don't know whether this is all coming because of the book or because of people within the Democrat Party who want her out of the picture because they want to replace her with someone further to the left. And here's a few names for you. Uh, where's Joe Biden? Just throwing it out there. He's awfully silent. Have you noticed you haven't heard from him? Where is old Joe? Who is behind all of this? And by the way, while we're talking about national security and uranium ore in the United States of America, where's Dianne Feinstein in all this? The reason I mentioned Dianne Feinstein is because her husband is a genius businessman who has his fingers and pies around the world. He made uh, uh, armor, armored vests, I understand, in Iraq that failed. He's uh, done war uh, contracts. Wonderful man, all around wonderful man, uh, Richard Blum. And I'm not sure he had anything to do with the uranium story. In fact, as of now, I see he has nothing to do with it that I can tell. But we did find this. I haven't seen it on Fox either. What was the number? 500000 to a million? Richard Blum gave 500000 to a million dollars to the Clinton Library, Clinton Foundation. 
Now, you don't think he gave that money because he wanted to get a stick of bubble gum for it, do you? Would you think Diane Feinstein, sitting as the chairwoman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, would have known about this uranium scandal? And don't you think that as chairwoman of the uh, Senate Intelligence Committee, she should have objected to the sale of our uranium ore to a Russian company? Especially when that hag was screaming about Russia being Hitler. That queen of hearts, Diane Feinstein, kept telling us Putin was Hitler. Meanwhile, right under her nose, uranium was being taken and sold off to the Russians. She must have known about it. Now, if she didn't know about it, then she's incompetent and should be fired. But then again, you see, I'm getting outraged over something that the government should be outraged over. If we had a legitimate government, the Republicans would have put down their whiskey bottles in their Prozac today, and they would have said, that's it, that's the end of the story, that's the end of the road, we're not taking this anymore, we're holding immediate hearings. And if, if any of this reaches any level of, of, of a crime, we're indicting Hillary and Bill Clinton. We're not going to stand for this. We're going to force them to testify about the money trail, the uranium, the transfers, etc. And we'll bring the daughter in as well. Now, it's one thing to talk about overt corruption. It's another thing to talk about the destruction of our national security interests by selling off the uranium in our own soil. Did you hear what I just said to you? Uranium from our own nation was sold off to the Russians. Now, the secondary question here is, why is this story coming out now? Who is trying to take down Hillary, and who will benefit from this? That is the number one question on the minds of those who can think two steps ahead of the news. And I'm pretty sure I know why this is suddenly coming out. The corruption of Hillary Clinton is nothing new. Those of us in the uh, business of investigating and talking about investigations have seen this dirt for years. But now that she's running and she's not sufficiently communistic enough, they're trying to destroy her in order to bring up the fake Indian, Focahontas Elizabeth Warren, which as far as I'm concerned is a very good thing. Because Elizabeth Warren is so unpalatable as a candidate that even the most tepid Republican can beat her. Don't get me wrong. Don't think I'm going to sit here and tell you I'm going to support Republicans right now. I know that there's corruption in that party that would make your head spin. However, there are different levels of everything. And this level of corruption approaches sedition, outright sedition. Now, the New York Times says this, whether donations played any role in the approval of the uranium deal is unknown. How could anyone listening to this show not understand what has gone on? How can anyone listening to this show tell me that you still believe Hillary Clinton is not only worthy of the office of the presidency with such a scummy, filthy relationship that the country itself can't stand anymore, but that the New York Times and other bastions of liberalism are calling it the disastrous Clinton post-presidency. The New York Times, as I just said, reported about the State Department's decision to approve the sale of uranium mines to a Russian company which donated $2.35 million to the Clinton Global Initiative. And then a Russian investment bank promoted the deal, paid Bill $500,000 for a stinking speech in Moscow. The right-wing Washington Post reports that Bill Clinton received $26 million in speaking fees from entities that also donated to the Clinton Global Initiative. The Washington Examiner reports 22 of the 37 corporations nominated for a prestigious State Department award and six of the eight ultimate winners, while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, were also donors to the Clinton Family Foundation. In other words, they bought their awards. And Reuters, another bastion of the right, says that Hillary Clinton's family charities are refiling at least five annual tax returns after a Reuters review found errors in how they reported donations from governments and said they may audit other Clinton Foundation returns in case of other errors. I want to ask you something. If you filed a false tax return and you got caught, would your government, would your IRS, would Obama's IRS permit you to refile your tax return? They put you in jail. They wouldn't let you refile. They would have caught you. What do you mean? When you get caught, you refile? What, if you're Hillary Clinton, you do what you want? Yes. We've gone from overt psychosis to treason 
sedition. The story today that broke in the New York Times is the greatest act against America that I've seen in my entire life. I've never seen anything like it. It's the kind of act that in a sane nation that was not drugged would bring about a revolution. A revolution that would unite the people. A revolution saying enough is enough. This corruption of the Clintons has gotten to a point where they must be immediately indicted and tried for the crimes against this nation. It's the greatest scandal of your life. There is no greater scandal I have ever seen in my life. And it is about the uranium in the ground in the United States of America that was sold off to the Russians. And where did this article appear? It appeared in the right-wing New York Times. The right-wing New York Times reported, as a result of this incredible book about the money that's being uh, uh, doled out to all of these corrupt individuals, is the Russian president, an American president, and the woman who would like to be the next one. And at the heart of this tale, according to the New York Times, are several men, leaders of the Canadian mining industry, who are big donors to the endeavors of Bill Clinton and his family. They built, financed, and sold off to the Russians a company that would become known as Uranium One. There are names to these men. One of them is Frank Juistra, G-I-U-S-T-R-A. And he is seen in a picture with former President Bill Clinton at a Clinton Foundation news conference in 07. Beyond, beyond the uranium mines in Kazakhstan that are among the most lucrative uranium mines in the world, this sale arranged by these men through Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton, according to this article, at least allegedly, gave the Russians control of one-fifth of all the uranium production capacity in the United States. Do you have any idea what the strategic implications are for national security? Well, they are so grave that such a sale would have to have been approved by a committee composed of representatives from a number of U.S. governmental agencies. And among the agencies that would have had to approve this sale was none other than the State Department, then headed by Hillary Clinton. And as the Russians gradually assumed control of Uranium One in three separate transactions from 09 to 13, Canadian records show us that a flow of cash made its way to the Clinton Foundation. Uranium One's chairman used his family foundation to make four donations totaling 2.35 mil. That's peanuts. That's what the surface shows. And by the way, all of you good liberals, those contributions to the foundation run by, I think, the daughter were not publicly disclosed by the Clintons, despite an agreement that Mrs. Clinton signed with the Obama White House to publicly identify all donors. Shortly after the Russians announced their intention to acquire a majority stake in Uranium One, guess what happened? Bill Clinton received $500,000 for a speech in Moscow from a Russian investment bank with links to the Kremlin that was promoting, in, promoting Uranium One stock. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? I'll go, I'll go on. This New York Times examination of the Uranium One deal is based on dozens of interviews as well as a review of public records and securities filings in Canada. But some of the connections between Uranium One and the Clinton Foundation were unearthed by Peter Schweitzer. Schweitzer is the most amazing author of our time. He's the author of the forthcoming book, Clinton Cash. And the fact of the matter is, this book should bring down the Democrat government. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from. Uranium One became very active in acquiring uranium assets actually in the United States itself. By 2008, 2009, they were a particularly attractive target for the Russian government. They would acquire what would amount to 50% of projected uranium output by 2015. That's the author that everyone in the world is paying attention to, Peter Schweitzer, in his forthcoming book about the Clintons and the money and the scandals. And this is the uranium scandal that in any nation would have brought... Uh, a demand for immediate uh, justice. Some countries, the government would have fallen because of a thing like this, because it means the government permitted the Russians to buy the uranium 
uh, right out from under our nose, so to speak. And it was done while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State. It's a huge scandal. It's probably the great. I don't know of a larger scandal in my lifetime. I really don't. I know that emotionally, when I read about it this morning in the New York Times, cash flow to Clinton Foundation as Russians pressed for control of uranium company, my immediate thought was this is the kind of story that led and will lead to a revolution. This is the kind of story that led to the Russian Revolution. But it really won't in America. You see, the difference between this nation and Russia of 1916 is that the people are fat here and drugged. The Russians were skinny and starved. In other words, the corruption was so bad under the Tsar and the systems were so broken under the Tsar that the people were, were hungry. No one's hungry in America. They're fat, overweight, drugged, entertainment, Disneyland, cruises, stuffing their faces, drugs, entertainment, sports. So they don't even know what's going on. They could care less. But this story will affect the thinking voter. And I don't know what percent of the population that votes is thinking, but I would think that the percent of the population that votes that is thinking wouldn't have voted for this rotten, stinking candidate to begin with, because this is nothing new. There is a sea of filth that anyone could have seen going all the way back to Arkansas. She has never been qualified to be anything other than what she was, which is a carpetbagger and a grifter. And so we're not shocked by this, but I am shocked by this. And others on one hand, we're not shocked, but on the other hand, the magnitude of it is overwhelming. Why is the magnitude of the uranium story overwhelming? Because it has national security implications. If you sell off the uranium in our own earth to Russia, at the same time she's giving speeches calling Putin Hitler, she is allegedly approving the transfer of this uranium company to Russia. Do you understand this? Where was Lindsey Graham, that fraud, that two-faced, phony Republican pinko? Another one that's, whose skin is too pink for me. And that's a, a metaphor, by the way. Don't take it in a racial way. Another one, watch out for the pink skin. It's a giveaway. If it's pink, it stinks. Let me put it to you that way. They're a little too clean for me. I don't trust the clean men like Orrin Hatch, who just approved Loretta Lynch. I don't trust guys like this. I never did. They wouldn't let me in their clubs, and I wouldn't join anyway, because I'm more picky than Groucho Marx ever was. When he said famously any club that would have me as a member, I wouldn't join. It was a very funny joke, wasn't it? Take a look at John McCain now, that crazy ma maniac. The man belongs in a straitjacket. A maniac almost caused a revolution in Egypt almost brought about a war between Russia and the United States, and this maniac is still in the Senate. None of them ever quit. Don't you understand that? So if you expect this uranium scandal to bring Hillary to the realization that she's unelectable, you're mistaken. And the reason you're mistaken is you have no idea what psychosis is. I've told you a thousand times that anyone who runs for higher office, basically there's something wrong with them mentally. I don't care how good they are. There is something wrong with anyone who wants to be a politician. Or they're so corrupt that they have no other way to make a living. Now, I want to backtrack for a minute. A plane bound for Amman, Jordan, goes down in the Caspian Sea. The crash yields no survivors except the hijacker. And a cask containing an agent of unprecedented destructive potential is missing from the plane wreckage. A carefully plotted terrorist attack has been put into motion and the resulting chaos might be enough to push America toward another costly war. Countdown to Mecca, it's a gripping page-turner. Savage.